Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> All right. Let's just take a moment to savor that first sip. Delicious. Today is Monday, May 31st, last day of May of 2021. 2021 is just speeding right along, isn't it? It's a uh, cool and cloudy morning here in Santa Fe. Got clouds coming and going. We clearly got rain overnight. There's water on the table in the Great Barber here. A little um, unsettled breeze blowing. It's supposed to be just a high of 62 Fahrenheit today. Um, not very warm. I think it's only like 55 right now. Slightly on the cool side, but I have my warm coffee. Good weather for the flowers. Some more of my roses are blooming. My roses do well here. It's always, it's sort of a combination of who is drought tolerant, who fits the zone freezing wise, and whose roots gophers want to eat. <laughs> I really think this is a thing. I clearly can't do lilies. I I plant lilies and they don't come back. That's um it is a sorrow to me because I love lilies. But you you work with what you have, right? You guys hear that sound? It's the quail train. There's always a lookout quail and they, uh, these are blue scaled quail and they, uh, keep a lookout and that's the, um, one of the calls. The, the quail train call, which I don't hear right now, which is the come ahead, which goes more like tuck, tuck, da, tuck, tuck, da, tuck, tuck, da. Sounds very much like a train, doesn't it? That's the name, our own name. I don't know what it's officially called, but they usually do it when they have their chicks or um, a group of quail. Uh, but that was the pay attention lookout. So uh, it's Memorial Day here in the US. Uh, I had too many days off last week, so I am not taking today off. Um, really hoping for. 15,000 words. I'm bright familiar this week. Ugh, excuse me. I had a um, very low key day on Saturday. I did an unplugged day, did a little, a lot of work in the garden. I did post a few photos to Instagram. Um, and Sunday I did yesterday, did uh, some businessy things, did some software things. We had the reception for these this year's grandmaster Nalo Hopkinson last night. So I was online doing some of that stuff, talking with people. <sighs> and I had brunch with my friend Megan Mori. And uh, that was fun because it was just the two of us this time. And so we, we had a bottle of champagne and we ate brunch and we had a fabulous time and we had an interesting conversation. I mean, we always have interesting conversations, wide ranging ones. Uh, and I'm trying to frame up like how much of it I want to, to mention today, but let's do earrings first and that way I can babble on. So those of you on video will see that the earrings and the necklace are, um, a matching set. The necklace is kind of cool because it has this clasp that just comes at the front. So it there's a circle at the pendant and then the clasp is just one of those um, horizontal bars and you slip it through the circle and put it in um, and then it just hangs around your neck and you can see the clasp. So since I have this off, the earrings are exactly the same as the pendant and they are this glass globe with brass fittings 
at the top and bottom. And inside are, can you see? You want to guess? Put that a little bit closer. Inside is uh, dandelion seeds. And the globes in the earrings are the same. And these were, this set was a gift from a writer friend who said that she really loved the idea of wearing jewelry that you could make wishes on. Isn't that sweet? So yeah, special, special gift from a special person. Uh, it was Marcella Bernard. Why am I being coy? Uh, you guys have heard me talk about her before. So uh, yeah, it was a lovely gift from Marcella on the occasion of one of my book releases. I don't recall which now. Yesterday I wrote a blog post um, expressing some of my frustration with some of these author coaches out there. Um, they, uh, they, they prom you know, it, they promise to sell the moon the, you know, for a low, low price. They'll sell you the moon, teach you to be a bestseller, teach you to write a novel, um, all these things. And I, the way that they package themselves is frustrating to me. Um, it all just seems like so much of a scam. So I don't know, I guess I'm going to say just, um, you know, be wary of the people saying that they can teach you to do something that they're not actually doing themselves. And that, by that, I mean, just because they say that they're a best selling author of a self published book does not mean anything. Um, it's so easy to, to purchase the bestseller title or to simply acquire it. Um, you know, people get to the top 10 of one of Amazon's sub, sub, sub categories, and then they call themselves bestselling author. It's not technically a lie. It's close to a lie. <laughs> so just be wary. And that's not, not what I was wanting to, um, talk about today because it's, it's oddly, I don't know. It's tied in, you know, because I am such a champ. Blah, blah, blah. I am not articulate. I may be something. <laughs> I started to say champagne, didn't I? I drank a lot of champagne yesterday and that was really good. I am such a champion of self-publishing. You, you guys know, I believe in self-publishing. Um, I would not be a full-time author if I was not making money from self-publishing. Although I did get a royalty statement on um, the 12 kingdoms and uncharted realms books and those sold really well at the end of last year, I made a surprising amount of money. So thank you. Thank you. All of you. It's nice. Maybe one day we'll get a mini series. I would just love that. I would write in like all of that backstory, all of the things that was going on, you know, like what Ursula was doing while Andy was in on and all of that someday, maybe. So I keep going side walking off of this track and maybe I don't really want to talk about it. I, I mean, I was trying to thrash out my ideas with Megan because I do believe in self publishing and I do believe that traditional publishing is not a guarantee of quality. However, this, um, this minimal vi <laughs> minimum viable product approach to self publishing is driving me up the fucking wall. And, and I know that this is something that I care about that not necessarily all of you care about. Uh, so I was mentioning a criticism of a book that I had read and the person who had recommended it. And I did enjoy the book. I mean, it was a fun story replied. Well, yeah. Um, it's a valid point, but since it was a Kindle unlimited book, I didn't worry about it. And I was so fascinated by that. Um, and I'm, I'm not calling anybody out on this, but it's like, why, why do we think it's okay for a Kindle unlimited book to have lower quality? I mean, isn't that what we're saying? Isn't that essentially what that is saying that if a book is in Kindle unlimited, then we don't expect it. We don't hold it to the same standard as a book that perhaps we've paid for. And when I was complaining about this to Megan, she was saying, well, 
but isn't that fair? And I said, but I don't want self-published books. And, and I should specify, especially for those of you who don't know that Kindle unlimited is not the same as self-publishing Kindle unlimited is one self-publishing platform. And it really is one that is, um, that people who, who go with the minimum viable product thesis capitalize on. Um, and I don't know if it's fair to, to credit Craig Martell at, um, 20 books to 50 K. I know that that is a term he uses a lot. I don't know if he coined it, but basically that whole approach is that you write minimum viable product that your book, you put the minimum amount of effort into it in order for it to be, to earn money on Kindle unlimited. And I know that part of me resists the idea of looking at a book as a product, which I think is probably not fair. Um, does, is that meaningful to me? I don't, you know, yes, a book is a product. We sell it. A book, however, is not a widget. And that is what ends up happening a whole lot with Kindle unlimited books. Cause the readers are on subscription. They just want to read a lot. They want to read fast. And so the minimum viable product is this concept of what is the least amount of effort you can get away with and still make money on Kindle unlimited. Now there's lots of other ways to self publish. I don't do Kindle unlimited. I tried it for a little while and I didn't make money on it. <laughs> I was just noticing something awry on the garden, but it's, it's not all that awry. It was from me rooting around out there. I thought maybe a critter had gotten in here. So, oh, I didn't make as much money on Kindle Un unlimited as I do just selling my books. And I also like being wide. I also don't like, um, I don't know. I don't like Amazon's monopolistic tendencies. So if you want to have your books in Kindle unlimited, they have to be exclusive. Um, for a while, I think some of you may know that I was taking advantage of a deal through my agency, through Nancy Yost literary agency, where they let me have some of my books in Kindle unlimited and still have them wide, wide, meaning that they are at other retailers like Kobo and Google play and Apple and so forth. And excuse me, too much foam. So I did that for a while, particularly with a few first in series, because I thought, well, if I could, you know, get some of those Kindle unlimited readers for those series and then get them in that pipeline. One thing that happens, there were a number of things that went wrong. One is it made me a little bit of money, but not very much. Uh, and you know, a lot of Kindle unlimited, unlimited readers don't ever leave the Kindle unlimited platform. I think that's one of the takeaways. So they're not going to read the first book and then go buy books. They're just not, they'll read the whole series if it's in Kindle unlimited. <clears throat> but well, let's see what else. Sorry. I lost my train of thought there. A little sleepy this morning. It's a Monday. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see. So, okay. So there were a number of things wrong with this model. That was one. So it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to. I didn't really gain readers for the series. Um, second of all, the, it was basically through another company that Nancy Yost was going through, who was doing the uploading and adding to Kindle unlimited. Um, they stopped giving me real time data and they said that they couldn't give me real time data. And that was a real red flag for me because one thing about Amazon, you can criticize Amazon in many ways, you get real time data. I can look at my data by the hour. So when a company tells me that they can't give me data for the last few months, and then it turns out they made a mistake on their royalties, that was a big red flag. And my agent agreed and said, yeah, that's fine. If you want to pull them. The other thing that happened is it turned out there were multiple takes from that money. 
um, not just my 15% agency, but this other company was taking money and there was another scrape and it annoyed me. So I took all that back. So, um, my point being, so, I mean, yeah, Kindle unlimited is a very particular market. And what happens is, is I read these books that are in Kindle unlimited. I do not have a subscription because I don't like to support it. I instead buy these books or I do the sample and then buy if I like it. So I just finished reading this book. That's a Kindle unlimited book and it was a fantasy with an interesting heroine recommended by um, someone who reviews my books sometimes and she really liked it. Um, and I found this book compelling. I read it all the way through and I wanted it was compelling enough that I wanted so much more from it. It was it was just I'm trying to think of even the word that I want for it because it wasn't even shoddily written. It wasn't even like it was badly written. Um, it just needed a lot more care. Um, there were no disappearing corsets or anything like that, but the balance of the book was off. Uh, the flow was off. There were several major, um, continuity problems, things that, uh, did not match what had happened earlier in the book. You know, basically it needed really good editing and I don't know, you know, the thing is, is really good editing is not part of the minimum viable product approach, right? Because you're going for minimum, you're not going for excellent. And so this is part of what I was ranting about to Megan who graciously listened, but she said, well, isn't this what we do with everything? She said, you know, like the, the wine we buy to drink a lot of every day is not the wine we buy when we want to treat ourselves or for special occasions. And I said, well, that's true. And she said, and, and then if we did, it wouldn't even be special anymore because we would, you know, she said, if we were drinking Dom Perignon every day, it wouldn't be a special thing. And I said, well, that's true. And I said, well, so is that what's going to happen with, with books? Is that what we're seeing happening with books? And, you know, and then she would say, maybe it is, maybe, you know, that there is the, the books that you pay for, uh, the ones that are the special treat, which certainly is the case when I coughed up my $12 for the, uh, murder bot novella, which I don't know if I reported back was excellent. It was excellently written. Uh, I enjoyed it hugely. I enjoyed it much more than these minimum viable product Kindle unlimited books. And maybe that's okay. You know, maybe the, maybe that's all those are is those are the, you know, cheap biggie bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay books. And there's a place in the market for that. Um, a huge part of me just balks at this because one of the things, you know, like me coming in as president of Sefwa, um, I'm going to be the first president who has a robust self publishing career. Um, and also the first who's very strongly romance crossover. And you know, I don't, I just don't want, I, I would love to find a way for, self-published books to be nominated for nebulous. Um, and I know there've been a couple of exceptions, but you know, it's been people who are already hugely established as traditionally published authors. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what my point is. You all have probably gathered my point. And at this point we would order another cup of coffee or another bottle of champagne and we would talk about something else. So on that note, I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts, ones that you will undoubtedly love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.